In mid-2013, an unexpected deep earthquake which is unusually large in magnitude occurred, registering in as a magnitude 8.3. Then, something strange happened. Not only did the ground start to shake on Russia's Kamchatka Peninsula, which was the closest landmass to the epicenter, but so did large swaths of the Asian continent. Expanding outwards, the ground shook in Tokyo, Nanjing, China, Malin, Indonesia, Delhi, India, Dubai, United Arab Emirates, and even Moscow in Russia, which was a whopping 6,400 kilometers distant. It was also felt in parts of Central and Northern Europe, including sections of Poland, Sweden, and Italy. Yet, it was also felt across the North American continent, including in Homer and Juneau in Alaska, Vancouver in Canada, Seattle within Washington and Irving in California, Rock Island in Illinois, and even EX Taco Kitla within Mexico. Billions of people felt or had the potential to feel this earthquake across three continents, with verifiable reports of this quake being detected by people occurring up to a distance of 9,500 kilometers or 5,903 miles from the land above its epicenter. While the prospect of an earthquake being felt over such a widespread area might seem like the beginning of a plot for a bad science fiction movie, what I just described actually occurred on May 24th of 2013. As this unusually large earthquake did not occur in the crust like the majority of earthquakes, as instead it occurred at the lowermost portion of our planet's upper mantle. Specifically, this earthquake occurred at a depth of 598.1 kilometers or 371.6 miles, representing what is known as a deep focus earthquake. It may seem counterintuitive, but generally speaking, the deeper an earthquake occurs at, the less damage, but larger area of our planet's surface that the quake is felt in. However, there is a bit more to this, as when an earthquake strikes it creates two types of waves, the faster and less damaging P wave and the slower but highly damaging S wave. The faster these waves can travel, the larger of an area a given earthquake can be felt. Since it is common knowledge that seismic waves pass better through a solid than liquid, you might wonder how exactly seismic waves can move through the mantle. Contrary to popular belief, the mantle is actually mostly solid and not mostly a liquid. Also, due to a series of variables, the velocity of a P wave actually increases to be significantly faster below 400 km depth than it is in any part of the crust or lithosphere. You can calculate the velocity of a P wave using this formula where, with increasing depth in the upper mantle, the bulk modulus plus 4 3rd shear modulus is increasing at a faster rate than the natural increase in density, which occurs with increasing depth. And this is why deep focus earthquakes are felt over such a wide area. However, you might be wondering what exactly can cause a deep focus earthquake to occur in the first place. The answer is the same thing that causes many large magnitude earthquakes, plate subduction. In most diagrams involving plate subduction, we see the subducting plate go deeper into the mantle without ever thinking much of what occurs to it. Well, in the case of subducting oceanic crust, plates can actually reach the top level of the lower crust where they level out and are unable to penetrate further into the planet's interior. Within the subducting slab, there is an abundance of metastable olivine. However, once it passes 410 km depth, olivine the mantle will naturally change into one of two denser minerals depending on the depth which have the same chemical formula, latzlicite and ringwoodite. With this being said, instead of simply changing forms immediately below this depth, the olivine will remain there for a time. Then, after a threshold is reached, all of a sudden large sections of olivine instantaneously change. Since the same mass of Wadsleyzite takes up 11.5% less volume and Ringwoodite takes up 12.8% less volume than the Olivina once was, this sudden change causes an implosion to occur. This implosion causes a section of the subducted slab to move, which generates an earthquake via what is typically a normal fault. This process generally does not occur below 660 km depth, although there have been some instances where earthquakes as deep as 751 km depth have been measured. As a final note, I would like to thank this channel's patrons on Patreon and channel members on YouTube.